the lion's share of the history of the 21st century is indeed going to play out in the Indo-Pacific and the United States has to play a central role. Welcome to Talking Foreign Affairs. I'm founder and host, Adil Carter, bringing you this special collaboration episode with the UWA Defense and Security Institute. And we are honored to have with us all the way from Washington, D.C., Dr. Kurt Campbell, Deputy Assistant to the President and National Security Council Coordinator for the Indo-Pacific. Uh, Dr. Campbell, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's great to be with you and your audience. Thank you very much for having me. So following the pivot to Asia, there was criticism that the U.S. didn't follow through. Uh, what makes it different this time around in the context of war in Europe? I think there have been a number of occasions um, that the United States has sought to step up its game in the Indo-Pacific, in East Asia. Uh, not just during the Obama administration, but other administrations have sought to do that. I think at times we've been then drawn away by events elsewhere or domestic preoccupations. And I think there's always been uh, a, 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 a true question about whether we are going to apply the resources, the sustained attention uh, on the Indo-Pacific. Um, I think the pivot was a good start, but I think what we've sought to do during the Biden administration, building on previous administrations, is integrate resourcing, capabilities, sustained attention, and just recognizing that the lion's share of the history of the 21st century is indeed going to play out in the Indo-Pacific. And the United States has to play a central role. And to do so, we must increase our capabilities and our focus. And I think that's what the Biden administration has done. So you mentioned about how the focus of the, the next few years is going to be in the Indo-Pacific. Can you just explain why the center of gravity is moving towards that region? The Indo-Pacific is the new center of focus in terms of global politics, economics, innovation, technology. All the major driving forces in global politics today are found basically in the Indo-Pacific. Great power rivalries, issues associated with potentially failed states, rogue states, all the basic challenges of global politics are found here. I, I think um, that recognition is clear not only in the United States, but frankly in the Middle East and Europe too. These regions are also focusing greater attention on the Indo-Pacific. Let's look at the U.S. and Philippines. Uh, what are the biggest challenges for the U.S. in managing its relationship? We have long-standing cultural, political, and people-to-people -people ties. And I think there's a re recognition of the importance of our bilateral relationship, given uh, encroachments into uh, Philippine maritime territories and also concerns about challenges in the larger neighborhood. And I think for these reasons and others, it is probably incumbent on both the United States and on the Philippines to take the necessary steps, both to provide legal protections and other kinds of capacities. But I do wanna just underscore that what we have seen in many respects is indeed a renaissance in US-Philippine relations, but extends far beyond simply the military or defense I think the goal here is to make the Philippines a central feature of the emerging uh, architecture of the Indo-Pacific. Just on the architecture, many don't see IPEF as being the answer. How do you respond to these criticisms? I do want to just underscore, we're one of the largest, if not the largest investor in almost every uh, country in the Indo-Pacific. Last year was our largest trading year between the United States and China, in fact, between many countries and the United States. Um, we are deeply engaged in all the international organizations and mechanisms that are about uh, trade and investment flows between our two countries. Our answer to that is a set of initiatives uh, as part of IPEF 
uh, the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, which really address cutting edge issues, whether it's infrastructure, supply chains, critical minerals. I think everyone understands that for the United States to be effective in the Indo-Pacific, we must have a robust, optimistic, commercial and economic set of relationships with uh, the countries in the region. And that's exactly and precisely what we're seeking to do.